Hello. Uh, I can see all of you, and I hope uh, you can hear me. Uh, this is the uh, IoT track, and this is a machine learning hub for IoT data uh, using Apache Madlib. My name is Nitin Borwankar. I'm the founder and CTO of Metamut. Um, I will talk about that in a second. Let's uh, give it half a minute. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I will uh, maybe start off with uh, the overview. So what is this about? Uh, this is about two or three things. One is using Postgres, Postgres extensions, uh, two specific extensions. So one of them is the uh, foreign uh, data wrapper, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and the other is uh, a project called uh, Apache Madlib, uh, which allows you to do uh, machine learning in the database in process. Uh, and in this particular project, we are going to use uh, CSV files using the file data wrapper uh, to create uh, virtual tables. They won't actually be data in the database, but it looks like tables, and you can use SQL on it, and you can do machine learning on it. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, if your sensors are generating CSV files, uh, and those CSV files can be in the file system uh, that can be uh, uh, that is accessible uh, to the Postgres uh, server process. Uh, for those familiar with Postgres, uh, any files uh, that the copy command can see, uh, those areas uh, would be a good place to put uh, these CSV files. And uh, you can update these CSV files on an ongoing basis, and you don't have to do anything else. The next time you run a query, it looks like the table's been updated. So first of all, uh, this is a work in progress. Uh, I don't have any uh, magic uh, results, but it is uh, something that's working end to end, and I'd like to share that and to uh, request for collaborators uh, in the future. Uh, there's a set of tools that I've collected from many different quarters uh, because I was motivated by certain uh, problems, uh, and uh, ongoing progress until we have some kind of a GitHub repo, etc., will be at this uh, Bitly link, uh, IoT dash Madlib. Currently, there's just this slide deck. Uh, so the, the long-term goal is to bootstrap an open source project uh, for data standards for personal data tracking with privacy. What does that mean? Uh, right now, uh, any data that you your wearables collect uh, automatically by default goes into the cloud. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps in the future, uh, we can have uh, wearables that send your data by Bluetooth to a local uh, hub or, or a server at home. And the idea is to do in database analytics, uh, right? Uh, I'm sorry, to do just analytics of any kind at this hub. And in this particular project, we're going to talk about how to do that with this with this Apache project that is uh, really cool, but not really well understood. So I'm going to use uh, data from my Apple Watch uh, and a wearable called an Oura Ring, uh, which has uh, sensors uh, that pick up your is primarily used for tracking your sleep, uh, but still does, uh, if you wear it 24 seven or most of the day, uh, it tracks uh, your activity and so forth, but mostly very useful when you sleep. Uh, so I use both of them and uh, to, so I want to integrate data from these two sources. Uh, the default way to do it is to give it all to the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch puts it in the cloud, but then you don't get the integrated picture uh, if you don't want to share this. Uh, you don't want to share all your data with Apple uh, for whatever reason. So the idea here is you should be able to extract all of these CSV files, and you should be able to integrate this data for yourself um, and uh, use a database uh, to do that and then do machine learning on it. Uh, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, any other project that has multiple so sources of data, uh, multiple sensors uh, that need data to be integrated, the same principles can be applied uh, just using different uh, data data models and tables. So my uh, current claim to fame, I founded Metamut. Uh, I'll explain what that is in a second quickly before moving on to the project. Uh, but it's a, a pre-seed startup for a sensor harness for monitoring the vitals of dogs. Uh, there's a backstory, uh, but we're building what is the equivalent of an Apple Watch for dogs to track heart rate, uh, uh, respiratory rate and a bunch of other things. Uh, my my original interest was in electronics. Uh, I was at Radio Ham in high school many years ago, 
uh, became an electrical engineer, then went on to move to applied math and pure math, and then came back to the ground and did some work in relational databases. Uh, all of that uh, by default and by no fault of mine, I ended up in uh, areas where uh, I developed an expertise to rescue projects in crisis. Uh, unconnected to that, uh, I'm the author of uh, a bunch of uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, at a GitHub repo. Uh, it's for quickly learning the very basics of uh, data science um, for developers uh, and, and, and for people who don't have much of a background um, in math. Uh, so I founded Numeric a while ago, and maybe my speaker bio says I'm the founder of Numeric, but that is almost defunct now. We were applying data science to software development. Uh, we applied it to large Apache projects to use as demos. Uh, it all ended with COVID. It's just it's long story short. I've also performed stand-up comedy in San Francisco, and also at a funeral it was requested by the person who passed away. That's the whole other story. And my goal is to uh, raise German Shepherds, and that brings us to the next part. So this is the backstory. Uh, my German Shepherd, Leo, died in January uh, of a very aggressive cancer. And uh, part of the protocol uh, uh, that we were trying out had to monitor his vitals uh, using a human sleep monitoring device. It's called an MFIT. It's a strip that goes under your bed and then uses uh, a very small electromagnetic field to track changes in your heartbeat uh, and translate that into heart rate, respiration rate, et cetera. Uh, we could track uh, the, his, the state of his health uh, by changes in trends uh, in, a, in, in these markers. And uh, at one point, uh, I was able to predict uh, a crisis event uh, looking at some of these markers. Uh, but we don't have uh, such monitoring devices for dogs uh, due 24 seven. Uh, so we could only do that uh, when he was asleep. And uh, given that there are 75 million dogs, thought it would be useful to build a device given my background in both data and electronics. Uh, but as a part of that, I also started monitoring my own vitals. And currently I use an Apple Watch, uh, an Oura Ring. Uh, when I'm out taking walks, I use a polar exercise heart rate monitor, which you strap onto your chest. That gives you very interesting data about uh, um, how your heart rate is going up, where you're burning fat, where you're building fitness, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, at an extreme uh, uh, nerdiness end of this, uh, there is a device called uh, a heart rate variability tracker uh, called Elite HRV. It looks like an SpO2 monitor. Uh, you put your finger in it and you sit still for about three minutes and it tells you something about heart rate variability. Uh, I can talk, uh, give a whole talk on heart rate variability, but in summary, uh, your heart is not a metronome and the heart rate uh, it fluctuates uh, from beat to beat. And uh, this is a good thing uh, because it allows you to adapt. When you're under stress, uh, your heart rate becomes more tight. Uh, and when you're relaxed, your heart rate is a little more uh, variable. Uh, and it's a, it's a measure of uh, balance between your uh, parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system. Um, and uh, if it is uh, very low, it means you're under stress. Uh, if it is too much, it means you're too relaxed and you need to uh, uh, get up and do something. Uh, so as a part of all that, I realized it was important to collect data from multiple sources. So that led to an IoT hub. So why do we need an IoT hub? We can just give all the data to uh, uh, one entity in the cloud, uh, but this is private data. And once you give it up, you don't have any HIPAA uh, controls on it. So it might be useful to have a local uh, point of collection inside your home or inside your factory or wherever you're collecting this data that you want privacy on before you put it in the cloud. Uh, secondly, when it's right there, uh, you can bring a lot of computational power to it without the latency of the network um, and uh, without uh, having to you know, wait for servers to come up, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so what I'm using is right now is just my laptop, but uh, it you could use an uh, 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 small Intel server or a Apple mini. Uh, I have an old Mac Pro that I'm planning to use uh, in the longer term. Um, and the, the amount of data is not very large. Uh, the data that we'll see now is uh, a year of uh, some data and uh, about six months of my ring and about a year of my Apple Watch. Uh, and it's all uh, compressed. It's about 300 megabytes. And uncompressed, it's about 900 megabytes. 
but that's contains a whole bunch of useless stuff. So if you focus on some very important stuff, it's a lot less than that. And so you can take, you know, 10, 15 years of data and analyze it even on a laptop. Uh, so after all that, you still have the option to upload it to the cloud. Maybe you can uh, extract a TensorFlow model and then run it in the cloud. Uh, there are many things you can do with it, but first you get the option uh, how much of data you want to share with others. So the idea, uh, the, the assumptions here are that you have some idea of, of uh, what a SQL query looks like. Uh, you've used Postgres, maybe not, that's not that important. Uh, if you have used Postgres, the copy command is good to know just so that the syntax uh, doesn't look unfamiliar. Um, I'm not going to do a lot with ML. I'm just going to do some uh, little exploration, but I'm going to set it up so that you could use all the ML algorithms uh, in uh, uh, Madlib. And uh, I'm going to walk you through a couple of notebooks uh, that uh, are uh, available open source. I'll point out uh, all of those to you. Uh, and uh, if you have some familiarity with the data that comes of variables or whatever your domain is going to be, uh, that's useful. Uh, if you used uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, it would be really good. If not, uh, you can still follow along, but you may not understand what's going on. So what's the Apache Madlib? Uh, I don't have the link here, but I will put it up later. I have given a full talk on Apache Madlib at PyLab, or the, the San Francisco Python uh, user group, not PyLab. Um, and uh, I go into more detail with that, but it's an Apache project. You can go to Madlib Apache org and you can see uh, a lot more than I'm putting here, but it was an, uh, initially it was an academic project um, and uh, led by professor Joe Hillerstein of UC Berkeley. Uh, I was consulting to Green Plum at that time and I got to know these folks uh, much uh, earlier than it even became an Apache project. I was always excited about it. It doesn't seem to have received a lot of uh, attention uh, but it's very cool, especially if you're coming from the SQL side, to just uh, run a number of algorithms using SQL queries. And then, of course, you can always use uh, Python notebooks, pandas, NumPy, and all of that stuff. Uh, but what I'll show you allows you to do this just using SQL. It's built on a strong uh, uh, formal foundation. Um, it uses a lot of C++ algorithms and matrix uh, algorithms to do uh, hardcore machine learning stuff. And it does. It uses uh, Python to orchestrate everything. Uh, the big thing is that you have the data there. You don't have to move the data around. You don't have a lot of overhead, uh, and uh, you can just use the data in place. In fact, this project we take it a step further. We don't even have to import the data from CSV files uh, into your tables. But you can create virtual tables right on top of the CSV files. So the tools, and this is the most important part, uh, the, if, if anything from this project, uh, if you can get these tools and collect them together, uh, that's a huge win. So there is one major project that started all this for me with is a project called QS Ledger. It's on, it's on uh, uh, GitHub. Uh, it's one person who's collected tools and extraction uh, methods for a huge number of data sources. Uh, QS stands for quantified self. Uh, that's a whole community that uh, measures all your activities, uh, both uh, uh, your your uh, body and also what things you're doing, uh, how much email you're sending, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to try and create a data model of yourself. And each person's is different. Uh, CSV kit may be useful to you. Uh, it allows you to uh, remove columns from CSV files, much like cut does and, and look at uh, different parts of the file. Uh, the, the, the cool thing that I found was that if you have a CSV file and uh, if you want to use it with a SQLite or Postgres, uh, CSV kit will generate the SQL for you uh, to create the table, which I always found was the painful part, tedious. Uh, and, and so this will do that for you. And secondly, there's the Madlib GitHub repo. Uh, you can find out more about it from uh, uh, you can find out more about it from madlib.apache.org. Uh, if you clone it, uh, there's a section there that uh, goes uh, 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 Madlib site community artifacts. And in that, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, for different algorithms. They've even gone into TensorFlow. I haven't experimented with that yet, uh, but you can actually run TensorFlow in the database. Uh, I don't know how that works, but uh, it does. Um, and uh, so the Postgres extension feature under the covers is what we're using in two ways. One is to install Madlib. 
the installation for Linux and Windows, uh, uh, Linux and uh, Mac OS has worked well for me. I have not tried Windows. I don't know if there's an installation procedure for that, directly for Windows. And the foreign data wrappers is something that uh, is part of a, a SQL MED, MED Management of External Data Standard. And it allows you to, uh, for a database to connect to external data sources. It could even be a table in another Postgres database. But in this case, uh, we're, we're going to use CSV files, and there's a specific syntax for that. So we're going to jump straight into it. Uh, you have a Postgres database in which you have installed Madlib, and uh, here's the syntax uh, for actually creating. So you create an extension called file. Uh, it, it, you just type this thing, and, and file underscore FDW comes with the Postgres installation. And all you're doing here is telling uh, the database that I want this to be loaded in memory and available for use. Uh, the next thing is you create a quote unquote server. Uh, it's basically an interface uh, to your data wrapper, uh, but it looks to you as if it's a manager of multiple tables. I've called it IoT. The rest of the syntax is uh, a standard. You just pick a name. Uh, now, this is something that I've created for my sleep data from the URA ring. Uh, the actual table is a lot more, has a lot more uh, um, columns. I've for this uh, exercise, I've reduced it down to a, a few of them. Uh, it tells you the date, uh, breathing rate, how long you slept, how long you're awake, REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, how long you're restless. RMS SD is an interesting thing. It's a, it's a, it's a RMS value of the standard deviation of the beat to beat intervals. It's a measure of heart rate variability. So you'll see that uh, often. Uh, called RMSSD, and that's one of the measures of heart rate variability that is used a lot to look at your uh, healthiness, readiness, et cetera. Your body temperature uh, change, uh, what is your lowest heart rate at night, average heart rate, et cetera, and uh, how many hours you slept uh, as a fraction. Uh, server IOTs is, is uh, the name of the server in which you want to create this foreign table Right now, there's no table is created. This is just a definition inside the database. And this is where you point it to a file. And this is where I point it to a CSV file uh, that maps very closely to this structure. Uh, the important parts are format CSV. And <clears throat> if you actually have, an, have a header in it, then you add this. Uh, typically, if you're, you're, you're uh, uh, familiar with the copy command, uh, you can just leave header as it is without the true, it's assumed. But in this case, I found that you actually had to put that in there. Otherwise, it won't work. So this is the overall architecture. And it looks very complex, but it's not really. Uh, these are a bunch of sensors, each of them generating a CSV file. This is your Postgres database with Madlib installed. And through the magic of foreign data wrappers, you just saw one example. Uh, each of these looks like a SQL table uh, to Apache Madlib. Uh, so this, uh, I don't think uh, people have done too much of, which is mostly people uh, import the data into the table itself. I've taken it one step further for IoT, which is uh, why not just let the CSV files be there and they can update in place. And that way you don't have the overhead of uh, ETL and all of that stuff. Uh, so uh, you're updating the CSV files. Maybe you're just appending some records to it. Uh, Apache Madlib just looks at it as a, as a table. Uh, you can run traditional SQL queries, and with the newer Postgres uh, stuff, you can actually do some things with window functions and time series and things. Uh, through Madlib, uh, you can do classical statistics. I'll take an example of doing correlations between two parameters. And uh, taking it further, you can actually try and see if you can build a regression model or a random forest model of the data that you're getting off your variables. So here are the steps. Uh, it looks complicated, but uh, it's it's it just uh, you follow it step by step and and it works. Uh, so first of all, you have to install C Postgres and Madlib for Postgres. Uh, then you clone the Madlib repo. Uh, this is for notebooks. Uh, I did not build and install, and I'm no help if you if you do that. You'll have to talk to the Apache uh, uh, folks uh, who run the developer list and the user list uh, using the Apache uh, protocols. Uh, you, you, then, then QS Ledger is very useful. Uh, it gave me a tool to extract my Apple data um, and uh, my URA data uh, came. Uh, it told me how to create a URL and uh, tokens and this and that. 
to pull my Aura data as well. And then it allowed me to pull it all out into CSV files. So uh, without QS Ledger, this would not be possible because it's just too much work. And uh, all the tools in QS Ledger make it very, very easy to do all of this stuff. So if you want, uh, and uh, I actually did it in, in Jupyter Notebooks uh, using pandas and just changing the columns uh, in my data frame and then spread, spreading it out as a CSV file. But if you don't want to do all of that, you, know, you can use CSV kit to shrink uh, the file in terms of columns. And now you have the raw data in CSV format. Uh, sorry. Uh, next, uh, you create the foreign data wrapper extension like I showed you. You create the server. And then you create one foreign table for each CSV file. So now then you can test the table with this. So all of this was the easy part. Uh, not really, this was hard. And then the rest of it, uh, I will show you uh, using uh, uh, actual Jupyter Notebooks and uh, the terminal. So let's switch to that. So where are we with this? So first, so when you when you clone the uh, uh, QS Ledger GitHub repo, these are all the number of different things that they give you. Uh, the ability to extract data. So you can see a lot of this is not your uh, wearable data, but it's your activity, how much time you spent on your Kindle, your Insta paper, uh, what your calendar looks like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a bit of Strava, uh, and then there's uh, uh, Apple Health, and there's Ura. And these are the two that I used. So let's go here. Uh, what do we have here? Okay. We don't want that. Okay, so very quickly, if you go to the URA, you have an URA downloader. And what that will show you is if you want to build a, ser uh, a service that other people want to use, uh, then you're going to do full API integration. Uh, I just needed my own data, and that's what this project is about. So you, you create an access token, and then uh, you build a URL that you, you just run each of these, and you get uh, your data. And then you can extract your sleep data, which is what I did. Uh, and after that, so this is uh, when I ran all this on my sleep data. You can get activity, and the other thing they uh, have is readiness. How ready are you to tackle the day? The other thing was Apple Health. This was a, uh, a very powerful. Uh, e you have to use your iPhone uh, to uh, let the Health app know that you want to export all your data. Uh, it will then generate an XML file and ask you where you want to put it, and. Uh, uh, you can put it in files. Uh, you can you can copy it somewhere, and uh, then uh, you can run the health extractor. And this is the part where where you run something. Of course, I didn't have the right uh, setup in the beginning, uh, but after you run that, you get a ton of CSV files, uh, a, a huge amount. Uh, I'm not kidding. So here I'm with Ura, but if I go So that's how many CSV files are created from all your Apple health. And, and there's even a bunch in et cetera. that I moved around because I wasn't interested in those. So what does this export.xml look like? So let's take a look at that. Oh, sorry about that. So 
So it's a proper XML file. But the thing that I noticed here was that each of these things, say heart rate variability, uh, they were all defined in terms of the XML data, uh, which is text. And the XML schema for this is not available. So you don't know what the data types are. And so part of the problem, in my opinion, with all of these uh, wearables having their own data silos is uh, there is no common set of units. Uh, there's no common data model uh, for a human being's health parameters. And everybody defines it slightly differently. And then that makes it much harder to pull together, especially because they are not sharing their models with anyone. Uh, and so part of the goal for this project is to try and create an alternative open set of data models for human health monitoring on a personal level. So let's go back here. OK, what was I doing there? Uh, excuse me for this uh, moving around. I got a ton of stuff open. And uh, I have to find my way around this. OK, so let's now look at what this looks like. So here's where I created the foreign table uh, Ura Sleep. I'd already created the extension and I'd already created the server. Uh, and so I created, I literally ran that, the code that I showed you. And what I got was a table on which I can do select star. And uh, just to make sure that it's still there, here we go. And so that looks like a table, but it's not in the database. This is running off a CSV file and foreign data wrappers. And so for everything else, including Madlib, this looks like it's got it's a table in there. Uh, so let's see what we can do now uh, with trying to run something uh, from Madlib. So another context switch while I uh, poke around and find my Madlib uh, stuff. Apple Health, this is not it. Where am I? Okay, this is not good. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is to take the uh, data from I'm going to take the data from my Ura ring and try to see if there's any correlation between the deep sleep that I get and the heart rate variability. Uh, in other words, I want to see if I get deep, deep sleep, am I more relaxed and ready for the day? Uh, I just want to explore this. I'm not yet uh, uh, at the point where I can do any predictions with it. Uh, but this is the preamble you will see uh, when you want to run this in a, in a uh, notebook. Uh, you have to load a SQL extension, which allows you to write SQL right in the Python notebook. I'm connecting here to my uh, local Postgres, and there's a Madlib version. Uh, so we're doing exactly, you know, in the, in the actual example, I made a copy of the one that, that was in there. The actual example, they actually load real data. Uh, notice what I'm doing here is going even one step further. Uh, I have a virtual table on which I'm going to create a view, which is another level of virtuality, because I want to add a column called day. It's the day of the week. Uh, and the rest of the notebook happened to use that. And I wanted to just uh, use all of that as possible. And this allows us to see how you can take an existing table and then add a computed column on it uh, at all the times never touching the underlying CSV file. So that's what I've done. And what I get, as you can see, is the original data uh, that, I, that I saw when I did a select star in the terminal. And now I have an added column, uh, zero is Sunday, et cetera. And so I have day. Now I'm going to look at correlation. And now here's the syntax of Madlib that I want to uh, show you. Uh, is, there are various functions. Um, I will take you back. Maybe I should show you that, but let's finish this. There's many functions uh, with Madlib dot something. So it would be Madlib dot linear regression and other algorithms and Madlib dot various statistical formula. In this case, 
you're going to take the data and then you're going to just give a name of a table to put the output. You don't have to create this table. And then you're going to take two columns uh, from example data. And so one of them is uh, RMSSD uh, and the other one, where are we? RMSSD uh, and the other one is how much deep sleep did I get? So first of all, you run this and you get some cryptic looking stuff. And then you look at the correlation matrix, which allows you to see what is the correlation between these two. Uh, if you did something else, which I did before, which is try to get a relation between RMSSD and the sleep score it gives you, I found a very weak correlation or almost none at all. It was 0 0.09. So 0 0.5, although it might in other things, uh, context look like there's no correlation, this is the strongest correlation I've seen. Uh, in other words, there is a non-trivial, you could say moderate to high correlation between how much deep sleep you get and how uh, good your heart rate is on the next day. And then the rest of it, uh, this is boilerplate uh, that is in there in the notebook. And I just took it and I changed the columns. And so I could get uh, all of this on, on a day by day basis. So you can see that uh, most days it's in that range. Uh, for some reason on the weekends, uh, I think it's less. So I yet have to figure that out, why on the weekends uh, I have less correlation. Uh, but on the other days, uh, there's a moderate to strong correlation between how much deep sleep I, I get, et cetera. And then you can just reformat that and look at it. Uh, covariance is related to correlation. Uh, if you want to go take a look at the uh, actual definitions, uh, here's the uh, Wikipedia page, uh, which says it's, it tells you how much, how similarly two random variables are varying and the cross correlation uh, is, is kind of a scaled thing. Uh, it's the same, it's cross covariance divided by, uh, it's some kind of a normalized uh, covariance. And covariance is literally how these two random variables vary together. So going back here, uh, you come up with some numbers, you run each of these things. The key thing of course is right here. The key thing was here. and. If you want to change what you're looking at, you can put any two column names in here, uh, pick the same names from here, uh, and then you can continue to experiment with this uh, and figure stuff out. Uh, I also want to show you, first of all, two things, and uh, we may be coming close to the end now. Uh, uh, sorry. I want to go back here. So this is what uh, the Apache Madlib set of notebooks looks like. There's a ton of them. If you go to supervised, there's a, and so each of these is useful for syntax, but you can you would need to expand on that to actually make something useful. Uh, other than that, uh, there's some time series window functions. Um, and if you want to look at linear regression, uh, I can walk you through, but first uh, I should see if people have questions. And so I'm gonna go back to where I can see that. Uh, I'm a little confused with this. Uh, let's look at Q&A. No Q&A so far, I think. Uh, if you're here, okay. Uh, 